about epidemiology and you may think oh, what is this epidemiology how boring is it because i remember as as you know when we were doing our undergrad so psm classes used to be the one which you wanted to give a miss but i think you know we should have paid more attention now because then to understand the magnitude of the problem and to respond accordingly you need to understand the magnitude of the disease and epidemiology comes in handy so you know when you talk of epidemiology you will talk about what are the causes that lead to cancer and there are some things that we know and most things that we don't know be very sure on this that you know there are fewer things that we know than we uh, than we uh, than we don't you know that what we don't know is a bigger bigger thing so we do know that there are certain cancers which happens because of because of viruses like i spoke in the last uh, lecture also so kaposi sarcomas lymphomas of the central nervous system non hodgkins lymphoma cancer of the cervix uh, is all because of uh, infection uh, or because of a virus then we do know hepatitis b or hepatitis c virus may be associated with hepatocellular carcinoma with uh, uh, the squamous cell carcinomas of cervix happening because of the human papilloma virus and an interesting association with oral cancer also so we do know that viruses what they do is they integrate their genome with ours and modulate the functions of our proto oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes and convert them into oncogenes and set up this cycle of making uh, of making uh, you know making cancer so when we talk of uh, cancer we have to talk about the incidence of cancer and we also know that you know if you talk about breast cancer specifically we will say that breast cancer is the commonest cancer amongst women in our country yes cervical cancer used to be the number one cancer but now it has been overtaken by breast cancer so how do we know this we know this because there is there are bodies which are monitoring the trends or the epidemiology or the statistics and that is how they know that this is how uh, this particular cancer is overtaken cervical cancer so in developed countries you see a different spectrum and in developing countries you do a see a different spectrum so that is how you're supposed to respond so you know we cannot blindly apply whatever happens in the west to us because the reasons for our cancers or the risk factors for our cancers the incidence of our cancers is all kind of different from what is happening in the west so we will do a little uh, you know a recap of what we spoke about in the last class and just touch upon it in slightly greater detail when we talk about pro the uh, hereditary and genetic factors leading to cancer so that is when the conversation shifts to proto oncogenes the cancer genes and uh, the tumor suppressor genes and the cell cycle regulatory genes so if you look at proto oncogenes tumor suppressor genes and cell cycle regulatory genes these are the three three things that keep cell division in check so all the functions in the body are Uh, controlled by genes so the genes are encoded in the dna and dna is what makes up the chromosome which which is the genetic library of our cells so that is where the genes are housed so when you talk of a breast cancer or an ovarian cancer we often talk about a braca1 gene so these are normal genes so mind you it doesn't mean that if you say if you have a braca gene means you have you're going to have cancer it is a mutation which it happens on a braca1 which sits on a chromosome number 17 or a braca2 gene which sits on a chromosome number 13 that these cancers happen when there is a mutation so interestingly we will be talking of p53 as you grow in your knowledge of cancer p53 is one gene which you cannot keep out because this is associated with a large spectrum of cancer and it is a transcription factor that switches on expression of genes and these genes regulate the cell cycle and how does it uh, regulate it either by you know arresting the growth or leading the cell to suicide which we in uh, in technical terms is apoptosis so apoptosis and growth arrest are the two mechanisms by which p53 regulates the expression of genes and it is also known as the guardian of the genome because it maintains the integrity of the coding that is happening within the genetic materials so that's an interesting concept so remember that p53 is the guardian of the genome because it prevents all of these unwanted mechanisms which affect uh, cell division from happening so what happens is when there is a mutation in the p53 gene by in by indirectly promoting cancer behaves as an oncogene also 
So now the P53 gene can behave both as a tumor suppressor gene and an oncogene depending on whether or not it is mutated. So now P53 has two alleles. When one of them is uh, mutated, the other allele can take care of the functions. The problems happen when the other allele also gets affected. So what happens is that the mutant gene produces a protein that suppresses the function of the second gene when there are repeated uh, insults to it and that is how it uh, becomes an oncogene.